Hello again, beautiful artists, and welcome back to another episode of Paint Along with Sky. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Sky, and I post beginning level acrylic painting tutorials here on YouTube every Saturday. So make sure to hit subscribe so you can join the fun and paint along. And don't forget to hit that bell icon to be notified when I post a new video. Alright, so it's still pretty much winter here, but we're looking forward to spring, so I wanted to do a special folk-style flower painting uh, to welcome the coming spring. I'm going to be using my four standard brushes for this painting. So I have my large square brush, medium-sized pointed sable brush here, and then I have my two detail brushes. I have a small brush and then an even smaller brush. I'm gonna get those in my water cup off the side of the screen. If you'd like to see a full materials list of everything that you need to paint along, go ahead and check the description box below. The colors that I'm going to be starting with for today's background step, I'm gonna be using uh, three beautiful colors. You really can customize this if you would uh, like to use different colors, but I'm gonna be using ultramarine blue, purple, and a little bit of my phthalo green, as well as some black and white. All right, let's go ahead and jump in with our background step. So we're gonna do sort of like an abstract background that's really fun and like I said, totally customizable. So we're gonna use our largest brush here. A Little bit of water always on that brush helps the paint go nice and smooth. And I'm gonna just start with right out of the bottle blue. Loading that up on both sides of the brush here. And I'm doing something new today rather than uh, the crazy brush strokes. Um, sort of a blended background or a really gradated sort of sunsetty background, which are the standards with my paintings. I'm going to be going back and forth here in sort of an abstract style today. So again, like I like to use these jewel tones, but really any color background would look fantastic. Even neutral colors would look gorgeous. But what we're going to do is just start adding these colors sort of randomly. So this is almost like a work of abstract art on its own. <laughs> so we're just going to be keeping the brush strokes going up and down or side to side. And we're just going to be playing with these few colors. Now I'm not going to rinse my brush. I'm just going to grab some purple and go right in with that purple as well and start filling up my space sort of randomly. Again, a little bit of water, always to help that paint go nice and smooth and soak into the textured canvas. Okay, back and forth and up and down, just like so. Nice. Okay, grab a little bit of white and just bring that into my blue for a light blue. Don't want to go too dark with the colors, having a little bit of variation in the tone here will make it look really interesting. So playing with some light blue, can play with some light purple, beautiful, little bit of water always. There really is no right or wrong amount of water to add to your paint. You don't need to add water if you don't want. I love to paint with watercolors too, so you can use acrylic paints almost the same way as watercolor and water it down and get that same kind of effect. Of course, we're working with our canvas today though. All right, and now I've taken a little bit of white into that phthalo green as well but I'm gonna use some of the sort of more pigmented emerald green too. And once you get the first layer of all those colors, it'll be a little bit easier to kind of play around and get this all filled in in an abstract way. <laughs> okay, very nice. And then let's grab a tiny bit of black. We're gonna make some darker shades of these same colors. If you'd like to learn a little bit more about color theory, how to blend colors, how to create tints, tones, and shades like we're doing today, 
I do have a course specifically for that called Color Theory 101, designed for the beginning acrylic artist. And if you're taking classes with me, it's a great little additional course to check out to bring you up to speed and make it so that you're a little bit more confident going off on your own as well. <laughs> All right, taking a little bit of black now, kind of into those two corners, just kind of adding that into my gorgeous abstract composition here. And maybe we do the same with a little bit of a lighter color as well. Just keeping it interesting and just a little bit different, kind of breaking up any patterns that we made. A little bit of that back and forth abstract feel, beautiful. Once you feel like you've gotten it to where you like it, go ahead and step away. And we're gonna let this layer dry and we're gonna come back and add a whole bunch more. So I'll see everyone in a few. Okay, welcome back artists. We have a dry background and fresh colors here for the second step. So I have a whole rainbow here. Again, I have my ultramarine blue, little bit of violet, some phalo green, a nice bright red, orange and yellow, and then also a fair amount of white. I rinsed my brushes and got fresh water at break as well. All right, let's go ahead and jump right back into it. This is going to be a sort of mid layer. So we're going to be kind of blocking out all of our different flowers here and getting those base colors laid down. And then we're actually going to take another break and come back with the final layer. So this will be a three-parter today. So I'm gonna be using my medium sized brush now to block out some of these shapes. And I just ask that you trust the process here. It might look a little bit weird, but we're gonna actually block out some shapes first with white. Um, white just as it is. And the reason being here is that our beautiful blue and green background is so vibrant that for our yellow sunflowers, the yellow probably won't be opaque enough. So we're gonna do a layer with white first. And I'm going to start over here on the left-hand side with a nice circle for my sunflower. And then I'm going to do one right next door as well. And I always start a little bit smaller than what I think I'm going to end up with because it's always easier to make something smaller than it is or easier to make something bigger than it is to make it smaller again. I'm gonna match that background color and do a little patch job if possible. Always possible in acrylic painting to change it up, but if you start small, it's much easier to just sort of push that line out as you make your circle more circular. But also, don't stress too much about a little bit of wonkiness because this is folk art afterward. after all, so it sort of uh, has that deliberate fun, sort of open, loose style. So there's no such thing as mistakes in folk art, in my opinion. <laughs> so you can still see a little bit of that blue underneath. And I'm pulling a tiny bit up too, but that's okay because that's just the first layer. And I'm also going to do a nice big white center of my large blue sunflower, who's going to be sort of center stage here. So a little bit of a bigger center. This is the whole flower though, whereas this is just the center. So we're just going to do a big white circle right over here, like so, and get that filled in as well. Nice. Okay, and now in this section, we're gonna have a couple of roses, but this flower is going to get much larger as well. So we kind of want to leave a little bit of space around that flower. And then our roses, we can kind of put wherever we'd like, but I'd like to go ahead and do those with pink now. So a little bit of red into some white for a nice sort of medium pink. And again, we're kind of leaving a little bit of space here, but I think that we'll have room for a rose kind of right here. And I'm going to start with these sort of curved brush strokes and I'm working my way off of the canvas here. And starting in the center there, just pulling those brush strokes around those first few center brush strokes, like so. 
nice little pink rose sneaking in off the side of the page here and we're just deliberately laying those brush strokes down in that sort of rose shape already to start sort of building that whole flower okay a little bit more pink because i want to do a second rose i'm going to do another one up here right about there really enjoyable i think to sort of block out your composition during this stage just giving a little bit of space in between these main flowers and we'll have little blossoms and some greenery that we can use to sort of fill in our spaces later and again just sort of laying that out in a rose type pattern already every brush stroke matters which is something i see in most of my classes because it's true you want to get every brush stroke going that same direction there not all crazy very deliberate this is the time of the week where we slow down we be deliberate with every action but also forgiving <laughs> to ourselves a loving and deliberate act just kind of going off the side there and again I left room for my beautiful petals which let's go ahead and add those petals now with light blue beautiful okay and just from the outside edge here we're going to just start laying those petals and you can use a smaller brush actually if you'd like as well and I think I'll probably, yeah, let's go ahead and downgrade brush sizes. I'm tempted to do it with that medium sized brush because it does save time. But, see, so you get a lot more control with the small brush. And like I said, we're not Russian. Actually, I am genetically Russian. <laughs> we're not rushing. American accents showing there. Okay, and we actually want these petals to touch the flower. And I like to sort of space them out and do a sort of four corners thing. And then you can sort of fill them in from there, however, end up, however many you end up with. Okay, a little bit, I think, more white here. I don't want to lose those petals in my background. And even with the petals, I'm starting a little bit smaller than what I think I'm going to end up with because you actually don't want like a wide gap in between your petals. You want them to be right next to each other, even if you have some that sort of come from behind like so. It doesn't have to be perfectly even. Okay, in different sizes. And that's sort of the fun with the folk art too, is that it's forgiving and you can kind of play around with the petal shapes and it ends up looking like, you know, petals that are going different directions. That's totally fine. Not every petal is in this perfect pattern. A little bit of natural wonkiness as i would say just getting that base color filled in i think this is another one where there's room for two just like so mix up a little bit more blue i hope i don't run out of white i might need to replenish a little bit more just like so, every brush stroke matters, keeping those brush strokes in the direction that you want to go there. It's okay if you come into the white a little bit because we're going to clean that area up later. So no worries there. 
Okay. And I think I have space for two right there as well. Nice. Cute shape. Okay, it looks like I have one really big petal. <laughs> that one. So I'm going to make a couple other that size as well. Just adjusting my shape as needed. Bring that all the way into the white. Okay. Just about finished with our base color here. Looking good. Okay. All right, moving right along. Okay, so we have sort of our main flowers now all created. Let's go ahead and add a little bit of greenery and then we're gonna have one more type of flower. Um, but let's finish up the greenery section for our sunflowers too. So I'm going to mix a nice vibrant green with my phthalo green, a little bit of white and some yellow. So you kind of want like a nice medium green here. And then I'm going to do some stems for my sunflowers coming down just like so. All right. And then a couple little leaves coming off of our gorgeous stems, just like so. So cute. And then maybe this one, we only have one little peekaboo, like so. How cute is that? Okay, I'm definitely going to have some flowers in there too, but let's go ahead and Bring a little bit of greenery some other places too with that same sort of medium green color. So I'm going to bring a graceful brush stroke here off of the side and create sort of like a little fern with some brush strokes on either side. Okay, a little bit bigger. Maybe that one goes all the way off. Yeah, it looks better. Very graceful. You can use your even smaller brush if you would prefer. Okay, that looks nice. And how about some greenery coming up from right there as well? You get to create your little composition however you like. Keeping every brush stroke curved there. Okay, going off the side, very nice, looking pretty. Okay, and I can just tell that I'm going to want one over here as well. Kind of coming from the corner there, like so. Nice. And just graceful brush strokes coming all the way down, getting those floral shapes. Put down those base colors, looking very pretty. Okay, very nice. Okay, a couple little filler flowers real fast. Let's grab a light orange, orange and white together, gorgeous sherbet color. I'm going to do a couple little tiny roses. Just like so. I'll do one more up here and I think I'm going to do a couple purple ones as well. Look at all these pretty colors that we're creating. Love it. A beautiful little folk garden. Okay. Very soft colors for these base colors. Reason being is again to get that opacity on there. That white helps it be 
be not so see-through, okay? Very nice. Little rose buds. And then let's do a couple purple flowers as well. Just with a light purple, so pretty. And I'll do one right here. Just like so, so festive, very springtime. The finished version I have of this, I keep staring at in my studio. I'm like, I wanna like wear this. I want this to be like a pattern. <laughs> Okay, super cute. Looking good, I think a little bit, maybe more greenery, let's do one more little thing of greenery coming up right here. Like so, right next to that sunflower. Those base shapes are looking pretty good. I think we can probably get a little bit of a secondary color here now on our sunflowers before we take our second break. <laughs> really wanna make sure that we get all of those colors blocked out properly. So I have a little bit of light yellow now, a nice bright light sunflower yellow like so, and if your centers are dry, you can go ahead and hit that with a nice light yellow. Just like so, bringing that out to the edge. Okay. Yes, this is, I think, the perfect painting for spring. And it is, dare I say, Eastery even though my intent was to just do a floral for now and kind of do more vibrant colors, but with these pastels, it's really given me Easter vibes. <laughs> okay. And then just a quick layer of yellow on this guy as well. Trying to use that last little bit of white that I have left. Nice and smooth, every brush stroke matters, keeping it in that circular shape. Curve brush strokes there. Okay, a little bit further out. Looking good. Okay. All right. Beautiful. I think while I still have this mid layer, I'm just gonna grab a little bit more pink and just kind of start to cover up more of that background in our roses just for a little bit more opacity there. Layering up that color for this mid layer. Keeping those brush strokes all going around that center. I feel like this one looks a little bit less rose shaped. Oof, but I'm running out of clean white. <laughs> we wanna push some petals out a little bit further here. Sort of lean into the unevenness there of the shape. A little bit better. We'll get there eventually <laughs> in a minute. Okay, let's go ahead now and let this layer dry. And when we come back, the fun part begins, which is the final step. So I'll see everyone in just a few more minutes. 
Okay, welcome back artists. We have a dry sort of mid ground here. And then I also got one more round of fresh colors on my piece of palette paper. So I have a full rainbow again. Um, I got my purple, ultramarine blue and phthalo green, red, yellow, black and white, and then also a little bit of burnt sienna brown. All right, I rinsed my brushes again for our final step. Let's go ahead and jump right back in. I'm going to go now into the center of my biggest flower and I'm going to do one quick little kind of mid uh, petal area. <laughs> so I'm going to have a really, really light gray here and right in between where the center meets the blue petals, I'm going to do this little small row of petals with this very light gray. You can have a little bit of white sort of mixed into it too, but you want it to be, to have a little bit of pigment with the gray. Okay, so I'm just kind of playing back and forth there with gray and white. And then I just have my medium brush there going all the way around my biggest blue flower. Okay, just like so, brush stroke like so very nice now i'm going to take a beautiful dark vibrant blue you can even sneak a pinch of black in there for the center of this flower and we're going to start small like so and just work our way out until we get almost to those beautiful gray petals you want to have a little bit of white before it reaches the brush strokes that you just did. And just one big circular center. I find that to be a very satisfying step. A little bit further out. Okay. Looking good. Very pretty, I like it. All right, let's leave that alone for just a second. I'm gonna come down here to my beautiful pink flowers. I'm going to add just a pinch of white so I just have a really bright pink that's still pink though. Not all the way to red, but pretty close. Okay. I'm just going to be adding this additional layer of brush strokes, like so, all through that shape. A little bit of white mixed in too. All right, that's looking just about right to me. You can see really how these Shapes start to pop now with this second layer of color. Very exciting. Same idea over here. Very vibrant now. I'm just kind of going around the center here, pushing my brush down. And I'm just getting it blended a little bit with that white as well. Okay, a little bit more water. So I can kind of clean this up a little bit, get that second layer of color on, which is gonna be a little bit different than your first layer. Okay, it's probably a little bit too light. Okay, that's looking just about right for our beautiful second coat of the rose here. Okay. Nice. Okay. I'm thinking that our orange probably needs a second coat really fast as well. 
Okay, the nice beautiful orange color. I just mixed red and yellow together real quick rather than using more of the out of the bottle. So that's a little cheat code if you want. You can just use orange as well, but just thought that into the second layer really quick and I do think that looks much nicer okay and then I'm going to grab a little bit of my gorgeous dark brown and do a center here for my sunflowers letting all of those shapes really coming together now looking beautiful okay Starting small, pushing that circle out, just like so. Okay, and then another one at the top. Looking very pretty with all those floral shapes. I feel like folk art is sort of deceptively simple. A lot of people may look at it and go, I could do that. But then once you jump into it, there's actually a lot of steps and a lot of technique involved. Okay, very nice. I'm gonna grab my small brush really quick. Looking really good. And then in my greenery, I'm gonna grab a little bit of bright green. So yellow and green together for a lighter sort of highlight green. And we're gonna go right through those same areas again. Sort of adding a second coat to create more vibrancy, but also like a little bit lighter for some variation. And if you go too heavy handed, you can always add some dark green right back on top. Just like so. Feel free also to move your canvas around if you need to, I like to do that when I'm painting on an easel or on a tabletop. But I can't do that while I'm teaching, of course. Can't flip it upside down. Well, I guess I could, but I spare you. Okay, little highlights all through that greenery. It really just makes the greenery pop. And I'm going to do a quick little highlight on these stems and leaves as well. Okay, looking really good. Almost time to add the black. Is it time? I think it is time. All right. Clean brush. Now, I'm going to probably switch back and forth from my medium or second to smallest and smallest brush here, but you can really use whatever you'd like. I think I'm going to start with this second to smallest. And I think I'm gonna go ahead and start with my sunflowers. Okay, so we're going to do first a black line around the outside edge. And you wanna go into your background here rather than into your shape. So they're gonna be, once again, a little bit bigger rather than making these guys smaller. Okay. And this is definitely an important step. So just going around the outside there, then I do a shadow on the stem. And also outline the leaf shapes. I 
like so. Look at how pretty. We're going to be adding black in pretty much every single shape that we've created. So I'm going to go kind of flower to flower, but also sort of as we work our way over, we can do whatever shape is there. So for this case, we had our lovely little piece of greenery there. Okay, looking good. Right underneath. And everything just start, sort of starts to come together and look very tidy. Which for me is quite satisfying, I think. Sometimes people don't like the black outline and you don't have to, you could do like a darker color of each area for a bit more realistic look, but we're not going for realism today. No, 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 we're having fun with folk. Okay, looking good. And then we're gonna go around the inter part of the sunflower as well. And I'm going to switch to my smallest brush here in just a minute. But for sake of speed, use this second to smallest for the, the one around the circles there, but for the very small details, I'm going to grab my very small detail brush. And we're still just working with black. And I almost want to sort of lean into like the sacred geometry type feel of a sunflower here um, with relatively even uh, petals here coming from, again, I like to do those four corners first. And then from the center, like so. You want to be very light-handed, very deliberate with these very small brush strokes. Kind of coming back and evening things out a little bit. Nice clean line, almost like using a pen. I love these folk art shapes. It's going to be very striking once we get everything filled in. Trust the process and just keep going. So these little sunflowers are definitely the most detailed flowers here in the bunch. Okay. And then that just comes together nicely. You could even use a paint pen. I really prefer holding the brush though. Okay. Looking good. Don't need perfection here. Again, we're going for folk art, so it's fun, it's loose. And we're going pretty quickly as well too. You don't wanna have super thick black lines better to have a little bit of fuzziness where you can kind of see the canvas texture rather than go over it again and again and again and again. Okay. Just like so. I get the whole petal shape. I'm kind of Cutting some of these petals short, which I don't want to do. Full petal. Each one. 
very classic. I'm very much inspired by folk art. I love Mexican folk art with the bright colors. And then as I mentioned, I am actually Russian ethnically as well. So I'm very inspired by traditional Russian folk art as well. And I think there's a lot of overlaps. I'm also Scottish, hence the name. And the red hair. <laughs> Although Russia has lots of redheads too. People don't know that, but it actually means Ruska's land of the reds. Okay, these sunflowers are very reminiscent um, of both Russian and Mexican folk art. A little bit. Thought I was done, but I want to clean it up a little bit. And then, of course, I get a slight drip. I should have just left it alone. Okay, it's all right. Those look really pretty. We're gonna add final touches there in just a second. Let's go ahead and do some of our other flowers first. These other areas. Grabbed my second to smallest size brush. And doing a quick shadow here of my little ferns like so super cute okay now for the roses i want them to be somewhat dry i'm gonna do a little half curve brush stroke like so we're gonna work our way around creating shadows of where these petals would sort of overlap each other Okay, and then also on the outside edge, I'm going to go ahead and outline that with black as well. A little bit of kind of a curvy line. Super pretty. Okay. Very nice. I like it. I'm gonna grab more black and just go ahead and do the other rows in the same fashion. Just all the way around, little curved brush strokes. And then heavy outline along that outside edge. A little bit of curviness, so pretty. Do a quick shadow here on my greeneries. Coming from all different directions here. Very pretty. Okay. From the top. Looking very pretty. Just a few more shapes left. Okay, let's see. Go ahead and go into our cute little teeny flowers first. We're going to be doing a lot of things with white as well. And this is another one where it's up to you whether you want to use the really small brush or just the second to smallest. But what we want inside of each one of these little ones is a cute little spiral. Very pretty, like they're not quite opened up yet. Very pretty and stylized. Okay. Nice. Grabbing a little bit of black to go around each of those shapes as well. We want everything outlined pretty strongly with black. Okay. 
Okay. And once we get the white on those other shapes, everything will look a little bit more cohesive. Right now, those little spirals are really sort of popping out at you. But we'll add some white in each little section here in just a second. Looking good. Okay. All right. Get your pretty. Okay, I kind of want to finish my sunflowers up first. So let's grab a little bit of white here. And in the little petals area of each one of these, I'm going to add a quick little highlight. Very subtle. Just a little touch of white. We don't want it to blend with the black. Okay, so we'll end up with this sort of yellow disc with the petals. And I'm going to grab a little bit of vibrant yellow as well. And just do a couple little shadows in those petals as well, just to give them a little bit of a different color, a little bit of a different feel there. Then just the yellow disc. Very subtle step. Every little detail matters though. They say the difference between a good painting and a great painting is just a matter of a few brush strokes. Which I probably agree with. <laughs> okay, and then in the center here, we're gonna take a little bit of black and we're gonna create some dots for the center of those sunflowers, all those beautiful seeds. You can use the front of your brush or the back of your brush. Try it out and see how they feel. Okay. And just getting that all in the center here, both of my sunflowers. Lots of little dots. Can't wait to see what everyone's versions of this look like. If you are painting along today, I've created a Facebook group called The Art Club, which is designed for my students to share their work, whether it be from painting along with me or just from your own imaginations. Would love to have you over there. Link in the description box below to join that. And now for a little bit of white in the center as well. You don't necessarily want to overlap your black, but you don't want to create too much of a pattern either. You can see how cute those sunflowers look now. I just love that folk style. They're very pretty. Okay. All throughout, careful not to blend your paint too much. Here you want clean white dots. Okay, very nice. And then we'll do a quick little highlight here with white in each of these little areas before we move on to our next section. Look at how cute that is. All right, we're going to take some white here into our rows as well. And same idea, we're not really trying to deliberately overlap, but you don't want to create too much of a pattern here either for our little highlights and shadows in our rows. Blended the gray a little bit. Very pretty. Okay, and then down here as well. And I think in our rows we might do a little bit more of a vibrant red as well. But I just love those white highlights. If you want, you can add a little bit 
more of a pink. Hmm, can't really see it that much. I think maybe just mostly on this one. Just if you feel like it's all to one solid color. Okay. I do like that. Blending just a tiny bit. Okay, very pretty. A little bit of highlights here on the greenery around our roses. Like so. Black and white in every area. Okay. Little tiny brush strokes though, not too heavy with the coverage. Nice. Okay, just a few final little steps here. Let's grab a little bit of purple. I'm gonna spiral that right in the center there to add just a little bit of depth to our cute little spirals. And do the same thing with the orange really quick. Darker, kind of, kind of reddish orange here. A little bit of interest in there, breaking up that color. A little bit more vibrancy. Okay, those look really cute. Final little shape here, and the last little couple steps. All right, let's go ahead and just go in here with our black. And again, you can be using your smallest brush or your second to smallest. I'm using my second to smallest personally. And first thing I'm going to do is outline that circle here right in the center. Just like so. And then we're gonna have two rows of petals. Okay, so the first row is our little white petals. We just want a few little brush strokes coming from the center here that goes right along those shapes. Okay, just kind of giving them definition. Maybe you can come up from the bottom. Occasionally they might come down from the top. Just like so, very light-handed there. Okay. And then, of course, our blue petals as well. And you're gonna wanna do a little bit of a shadow right where the blue meets the white as well. But I'm being somewhat loose with my brush strokes. You don't always need to have perfect brush strokes with everything meeting each other. Some sort of floating brush strokes that go around those shapes kind of leans into that folk feel. A little bit more stylized, yeah? Okay. Just creating shadows. Pretty strong brush strokes though. Okay. Home stretch folks, everybody almost finished. bit of a different shape for a lot of these. I feel like I want to add <laughs> a little brush stroke down there. 
Sometimes you never know where your eyes want to take you. You gotta just go with the flow. Okay, a little bit of shadow. Right where the layers meet. Very nice. Okay, final steps. We're gonna mix up a very light blue. Just a tiny bit of blue, mostly white. Okay, I'm gonna use that as a quick highlight color and some of my petals here just to add to the color variations that I'm sort of naturally getting for a little bit of a highlight. Just a little bit here and there, just on most of these, just like so. Okay, looks like that one is a little bit too light. I'll add a little bit of darkness onto that. There we go. Just playing around. <laughs> okay, that looks really cute going to go into the center here now with white little dots here in the center of big blue as well. All around nice and random. Okay. Very cute. Somewhat evenly dispersed. And let's take some black as well. And we'll just go on in between there. And filling out the rest of the space. Okay. How pretty does that look? Very nice. Let's do a couple little kind of floral shapes around here and there, just as a little final step here. Kind of just going around any final areas like so. Kind of filling in the space very subtle though. Okay, I think that looks just about right. Okay, so let me know what you thought of today's painting in the comments section below. I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to see you over in the art club, so please join us over there. And that is all the instruction that I have for everyone this week. So happy spring, and until next time, stay creative.